Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be hopping window managers. So I've been using DWM for about, oh, probably close to six months. I think I started using DWM right about the time I actually started this YouTube channel. And I'm ready for something new. So a couple weeks ago, a few of the other YouTube uh, Linux YouTubers went through and talked about a window manager called LeftWM. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that out someday. So I added it to my bookmarks to look at later. And today that's what I'm going to do is look at uh, LeftWM and see if I can get used to it enough to the point where I can make it my daily driver. Now, I've been playing around with it now for a couple hours. So I've made some changes and I'll talk about the things that I've done. And I'll also give some early thoughts on it and then maybe in a couple weeks or a month or so I'll make another video on my experience with it and we'll see if I'm still st you know sticking with it so let's go ahead and jump in shall we alright so leftwm is on github here and I just installed it via the AUR now you could go through and build this through the rust uh, package manager or installer or whatever it is called cargo but I went just went through and installed it via the, the AUR using yay and I've experienced some interesting things that aren't on the doc in the documentation. So, and I'll talk about those later. But for the most part, it just installed, it added it to the X sessions file, just fine. So it's in SDDM, which is the, the display man or the login manager that I use. So it, it booted right in. And the first thing you'll know when you boot into it is you just get a black screen. So it's very much like Xmonad in that way. I think it's like Qtile in that way. It doesn't have a bar or anything like that. So you might be lost if you just install it and you know not know what you're doing. So the default key bindings are super shift enter for a terminal, which you'll have to have Alacrity installed, otherwise it won't launch anything. Because LeftWM is written in Rust and it promotes other Rust programs. So things like Alacrity are set to default. So I have Alacrity installed, and I'm actually trying Alacrity as my daily driver. So if you hit Super Shift Enter, you'll get a terminal, and it's Alacrity. Now I've gone through and changed the key binding to that to Super Enter because I, I don't really need feel the need to have three key presses to get to a terminal when I do it all the time. It's just Super Enter. That's the way I do. It. I've also changed the close command. Now by default, Super Shift Q will close a window. I've changed that to super super Q. Uh, by default, Super Shift X closes left WM. I've left that the same. The only other one that I'm going to end up changing is D menu. Right now, Super P brings up D menu, and I've left that the same. And I probably will keep that actually, but I'm going to add one called for Super D so that I can use Rofi. Now, the documentation is actually fairly good now like I said I experienced some weird issues with theming that I don't think that other people will face for whatever reason leftwm won't read the auto start file appropriately or it won't it won't read the script for the theme appropriately I had to add it to the auto start file in dot config so um, like I said I'll talk about that a little bit later for the most part the documentation is actually really well, well done it does there is a full wiki up here that you can click on and it will take you through all the things and commands that you can put into the configuration file with keybind commands and uh, the workspaces and such to control them via whatever in the in the configuration file so actually, let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration file. I think I have this on three. Yeah. Now I'll have to zoom in here. Yeah. So Control Plus in Alacrity is zoom in, which is something that is actually pretty good because Control Shift Plus is usually the one that I use. It's close enough. Now, really, when you after you've installed it, you're left with a dot config slash left WM folder and that contains just a config.toml file. These other ones are things that I've actually gone through and added. So I'll talk about those things in just a minute. But the config.toml file is really just your configuration for your key binding. So if we just vim into config.toml, we'll, all we'll see here is the declaration of the mod key, the work the names for the workspaces, which is just one through nine. Now the workspaces are 
fairly interesting in that they're a little bit different than what you pro might be used to. Now, like with DWM, you have nine workspaces on monitor one, nine workspace on monitor two. If you have a third monitor, you have nine workspaces there. In I3, you have a set number of workspaces, but you can have as many as you want. But and you can assign those to different monitors. Now, in BSPWM and Qtile and maybe Xmonad, I'm not sure. I haven't played around with Xmonad enough. But with X with with those window managers, you have nine workspaces total. And where they are on your monitors depends on what window has your focus. So right now I'm on three. If I were to change to six, which is my Audacity and OBS workspace, it would actually change monitors instead of just changing to that workspace because there's only one workspace number six. It will always assume that you want the the workspace that you just pre you know you use the key binding for as the main workspace on your main monitor. So if I change to workspace one now, because so when I did that last key binding, workspace six moved to monitor one, workspace three moved to monitor two. So my my uh, config.toml file is actually over on monitor three, which you can't see right now. But if I moved to say like mon uh, workspace, I don't know, uh, four, that moves goes makes work excuse me that makes workspace four the on the main screen but leaves the second monitor as workspace three so it's a little complicated and it takes a little bit getting used to now unlike Qtile which is fairly easy to so in Qtile and BSPWM for that matter you can go through and move a window from one monitor to the other there's a command uh, move to the other monitor right, whatever it's called I don't see that with leftwm. There's a whole bunch of uh, key bind commands here that you can use. You have the execute, hard reload, soft reload, close window, move to last workspace, move up, move down, move top, move to tag, move window up, move windows down, next layout, previous layout, workspace next, focus previous. I wonder if this might actually work. So if I want mod. All right, now what if I wanted to shift to the next workspace? Move, move, move. So what I want it to do is move. Yeah, I don't see that. Maybe it's up here a little bit. So that's focus. And these are all focus. Move to tag. Move to, move to last workspace. See, I don't see one that says move to next workspace or move to other workspace. So there's a focus next workspace. Yeah, this one here. So that's a little bit different and something that has been a little weird really what I'm gonna end up having to do is go through and kind of learn the muscle memory of saying say I want to move this browser window to workspace alright so let's say I want I have workspace 8 of active on my second monitor if I wanted to move this to workspace 8 I couldn't do like super shift arrow keys or super shift left which is something that I could do in DWM or I3 or any of those other ones, does I'd have to go Super Shift 8. So if I do Super Shift left, it actually does nothing. If I do Super Shift L, it also does nothing. But if I do Super Shift 8, that moves it to 8. And then like I could change to the 8th workspace here on my main screen. You Now you can see up here I'm on 8. So that's a little weird and something that I'm going to have to learn. Now, the rest of the uh, configuration file is just the basic key binding. So it, tells, it does mod return for alacrity it does mod q for close window soft reload is mod shift r key binding this kills left wm and then um let's see here if you have s lock installed it has a s lock binding here and then move to last workspace is mod shift w so i wonder what mod shift w actually does mod shift w moves it to so mod shift w will actually move it to the other monitor so that's the that's the thing I was looking for. Well, it will kind of move it to the other monitor sometimes. Like if I shift mod shift W now, it actually does nothing. That's really weird. I'm not exactly sure what that is for. Let's actually go see if uh, that moved to me move to last workspace. Let me look at that again. Let's see what that actually says about that. And I'm past it. Move to last workspace. Taste the window that is currently focused and moves it to the workspace that was active before the current workspace. Okay, I'm not sure why that would be useful. 
I'd much rather have something where I can move to a different monitor. And maybe they have that and I just don't see it. That's always possible. So the rest of these are fairly just used for moving things back and forth and moving to different tags. Now, they don't use the Vim keys, which is really bothering me because I'm so used to using Shift HJKL or Mod HJKL. So I'm going to have to go through and, and change those. They use the arrow keys, and a lot of keyboards actually that I have and use don't actually have the arrow keys. Now, the one that I'm using today does, but... Some of them, the 60% keyboards that I have just don't have arrow keys, and I don't want to use a different layer or whatever. So that's going to have to change. Now, like I said, the rest of this configuration file is just the key binding, so we won't even need to go through all the rest of these because you can actually take a look at them. Let's talk a minute about themes, and this is where I'm going to be talking a little bit about the problems that I was having this morning when I first installed this. So by default, you can go through and install several themes. Now... If you don't install the community themes, you're, you're, you're giving three themes by default, and you have to download these explicitly. Uh, and if, especially if you download them from the, if you download LeftWM from the AUR, you'll have to go to this GitHub page and download LeftWM and then get the themes folder out of there and transfer it to your LeftWM config folder. But you're given three themes by default. You're giving Lemon Bar, Poly Bar, and Exmo Bar. Now, I don't have Exmo Bar installed, and I didn't care for Lemon Bar because I was too stupid to figure it out. So I chose Poly Bar because I understand Poly Bar, and I've used Poly Bar many times before. Now, when you download these, you're give, you need to create a themes folder within your .config slash leftwm folder. So I'm going to CD into the themes folder here and just do an LS. Now, I removed the Lemon Bar and the the Exmo bar ones because I don't need those. So I just kept the, the basic poly bar. And then what you need to do is do create a link between the basic poly bar and the current folder. Now I don't know if it creates the current folder by default. You may have to create that. I don't remember if I did or not. But you just do an ln-s and then you do this command here. And then what that's supposed to do is when you hit re you know, re when you reload left WM it's supposed to start up this theme as you see it here you get the poly bar and you get some you know a different color border because by default the border color is red and you don't have a wallpaper with this theme you get a wallpaper you get colored borders and you get the poly bar but it didn't work for me I didn't know why it was wor wasn't working for me supposedly like I said when you hit reload or when you log out and log back in it's supposed to start that up but it doesn't now the way this works is if we CD into the current folder and we do an ls here now e each of these full themes have an up and a down script so what I found was that for whatever reason that up script was not going through and being executed at startup and I don't know why now I'm sure it was something that I did wrong but I couldn't get it to just work I thought it and I thought it would um, but it didn't so I ended up having to go through and, and execute it via an auto start file so but by, by default left WM will start up everything that's in your auto start file so let me let me show you that so if you cd into dot config auto start and you do an ls you'll probably find several things that in a traditional desktop environment will start up at startup so i usually have dropbox and for whatever reason skype decides it has to restart or start up every time the computer starts up what i end up having to do is create this up dot desktop file so if i vim into up dot desktop this is what i ended up having to do I had to create an upscript and exec that upscript that was from the themes folder, and then add the, make sure it wasn't going to start in a terminal. Tell it was an application type, and then tell it not to notify me when it started. So that actually got went through and worked, and that left me with the setup you see here. Now, if we cd back into dot config left wm and themes, and then cd into basic polybar and do an ls you'll see basically this is the same stuff that was in current because we've went through and linked that to get link those together if we vim into the polybar config this is just a traditional polybar config it um has the main bar here and it's named it bar zero the only thing that seems to be a little bit different now it actually goes through and will defines a whole bunch of different bars but they're all basically the same because it went the um theme.toml here if we vim into theme.toml what it will, that's not the right run. Um, which one I was looking for? 
Actually, I think it's going to be the, the up. So we've been into the up script here. We'll actually see somewhere around here. It will actually go through and, yeah, right here at the end. It will actually try to figure out how many bars you have or how many monitors you have, and that will create that many bars within the polybar f f uh, configuration folder. That's really, really nice. Now, because you're using this up script, you don't have a launch.sh like you would have in other, you know, situations where you use polybar. And that's kind of cool because, I mean, we don't have to actually go through and, you know, deal with the launch.sh, which is always a little weird. Uh, especially when you write it yourself. I've always just kind of stolen the Arco Linux launch.sh file because it works. Every time I try to, to write the launch.sh folder, I always mess up and have it the polybar just show up on one of my monitors. I'm never very good at doing that kind of stuff. So one of the uh, other stuff in this um, up script, this is basically your auto start.sh file. You can go through and put in here whatever you want to start whenever you restart the window manager. So if you want something like nitrogen to restore your wallpaper, you could go through and do that. Right now, this has FES, FES doing that. You can also It also goes through up here at the top and um, it starts Compton or Pycom so that it goes through and makes your polybar uh, transparent a little bit. Now, it, it does not go through and tell it tell Pycom what configuration Pycom configuration file to use, so you can go through and change that if you wanted to use your default conf Pycom config, which I probably will end up doing, because I have all of my terminals and stuff opaque or whatever, so I'll go through and tell it to use my Pycom configuration file instead of whatever default it's trying to pull from. So that's basically how themes work. Now there are community themes and you can find those uh, here and you can download these. Now there's several ones that you could try. Now we could go through and actually try one of these, but I'm not sure how it would work. But so actually I think I probably won't because I don't want to interrupt my OBS thing by hitting the refresh button. Uh, I did that once and I don't want to do that again. Uh, but there's several of them here that you can try. I've not actually tried any any of these other than the polybar ones because I'm not actually sure if this will go through and like do a, a a polybar or not. I'm not sure what bar the the yeah it uses the Dracula one uses polybar as well. Now this it has screenshots of these, so we can actually take a look at these. Now I'm not sure. I see like that one in there looks like it has a menu of some kind, which is kind of cool. But anyways, basically, so LeftWM has this whole theming system or whatever that allows you to create, change your colors, change your bar or whatever, all in a single file. And then all of your other stuff that has to do, do with the configuration of your window manager, like your key bindings and stuff, is all done outside of that folder so that you can go through and change your theme however you want without altering your other files. It's an interesting concept. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not. I'm not sure if I'm going to like only having nine window uh, workspaces. I'm so used to having nine on one monitor, nine on the other monitor, and having all those things available to me all at the same time. I don't know if I'm going to be happy with just nine. I also don't see a way to make it so that, like in BSPWM, which also has just nine win, uh, workspaces, you can define using BSPC which workspaces appear on which monitor. I don't see that capability here, which is going to drive me bonkers. I'd much rather have... So it's kind of a combination of um, BSPWM, which only has the nine workspaces, and Qtile, which has nine workspaces and you have to share them between the monitors you can't in Qtile from what I remember at least you can't go through and say hey I want monitor one to have workspace one through five and works uh, monitor two to have six through ten you can't do that like you like you said like you can in VSPWM and you can do that in i3 obviously in DWM each work each desk or each monitor has nine workspaces whether you like it or not and that's I'm I'm pretty sure that's the same way with like Aus or yeah Awesome and Xmonad. But like I said, I haven't played with either of those enough to know for sure. Now, just 
in conclusion, I'm going to try this out for a few days at least. I'm going to try to make it my own. I'm going to go through and make all the uh, window... I'm going to go through and make all the key bindings and stuff work for me. I'm going to go through and try to figure out some more of the th the default key bindings that are actually in there and see if there are all the ones that I haven't explored yet to kind of fix some of the really weird things that I have I've found so far like not being able to move to certain monitors. Uh and I'm and I'm going to get involved in the community cuz I'm going to go through and, and see if I can t talk to uh, like the, dev the devs or something and see if there are things that I'm missing because I don't see any of the stuff for monitor specific stuff and I kind of want to know if that's in there and it's, I'm just not seeing it so like I said I'm going to probably make a video again in a couple weeks maybe a month or so and we'll see how I'm at you know still using this or if I'm I've gone back to DWM with my tail between my legs it's entirely possible that I go back to DWM today I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to use left WM full time for a couple days, but my willpower has never been all that great. Or, you know, let me rephrase that. My patience for nonsense has never been all that great. So, if I come up across a come across a show stopping thing that I hate in left WM, I'll be going right back to DWM. So, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I would like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching again, and I'll see you next time.